Let's do this. Welcome everybody to Atomic Comms. This is Paul Photon Davidson here. And welcome to 2017. And it's been a day since the Nintendo Switch presentation. And one of the games that really fascinated me was Super Mario Odyssey, the new 3D Mario game. It's going to be coming out for the Switch later on this year during the holiday season. And it was, like I said, it was one of the most interesting parts of the Nintendo Switch presentation. I love Mario. It's one, He's one of my favorite video game characters of all time. And seeing the scope and all the detail they're putting into this new 3D game is just freaking amazing. And I'm going to go over that throughout this entire video. We're going to be going over the, uh, the reveal trailer because it showed off an awful lot. And... I just cannot get enough of this trailer. I love the music. I love the gameplay that we see. I love the environments that they showed off. But yeah, I'm going to stop spouting out. Let's actually get into the dang video. And let's hope we see some awesome stuff that we were not able to see on the first glance. So here we go. So we're starting the trailer. And here we see the two billboards. Crazy Cap and New Donk City. So I'm talking about Crazy Cap here. Because it looks like it will be kind of important. Because it shows up multiple times in the trailer and uh, New Donk City I was just showing off mostly because that's obviously probably the name of the city that we're in right now and now we're gonna continue on through the trailer and then we see this thing flying off in the background which is very resemblant of the uh, ship that Mario is gonna use to travel through the different worlds we'll see this later on in the trailer and then we lower down from the view of the ship going by. And we're going to focus on this little intersection right here. You see those little uh, walk and stop signs that are right there. They got the question mark blocks on them. And they also seem to be uh, in the shape of blocks. So I'm thinking that most likely you're going to be able to hit those to get items and stuff out of them. I mean, they have question marks on them and they're in the shape of a block. So why would you not be able to hit them? And then uh, some of the other billboards I want to see. There's actually one in particular. You see um, down there, uh, it's way below the new Donk City thing. It's called Diddy's Mart. I don't know what's the, and it looks like to be a Dixie Streak or something like that. Obviously references to the Donkey Kong characters. And then uh, we see a bunch of humans walking around. I'm seriously wondering if they're going to be NPCs. I mean, there's an awful lot of them that we'll see later on. So whether they're, MP they're NPCs or they're just people that are part of the environment, I don't know. We're going to have to look at that in a later part of the video. And then, yeah, we have more of the, of the uh, trailer. Mario jumping out of the out of the manhole. Obviously a reference to him, to him being a uh, plumber. And that whole part seemed to be in-game in also. So, like a cutscene or whatever. So the graphics are pretty good. And then here we have a part where he's jumping off of the taxi cab's uh, hood. And then doing a flip. Doing wall jumps like he always does. And then the reason why I'm freeze framing it here is because of that red area and then the background. That obviously looks like a part you can uh, travel through. I see some coins in there I think or whatever. Different part of the level just showing it off. After this we're going to see Mario on top of a huge building. And now we're going to look at the true scope of this city level. I thought this city was going to be a the city level was going to be a bit bigger, you know, not exactly Grand Theft Auto sized, but something a bit bigger than this. This looks a bit small, but then again, it probably it did look a lot bigger when we were down on the ground. But this is the true scope of the city. Obviously, the the major the the uh, all the skyscrapers and all that are all part of a background, and there's a bunch of fog down below there. So I don't know if it's kryptonite fog or whatever, but. Yeah, it's honestly kind of a small city. And then we see the red uh, platforms I showed you earlier. Obviously, you're going to have to traverse through those to get to important parts of the level, as we see, because there's a beacon on top of the skyscraper in the background over there. And uh, then we're going to move on to another viewpoint of this particular scene. So now we have a more overhead perspective of the city. We look down on the streets, and then I'm starting to think that maybe that... Like I said, this the city does look a kind of small, but at the same time, I'm wondering if maybe we can walk on like the left or the right sides of it. Like this is like um, a planetoid from Super Mario Galaxy, but it's in the shape of a square. Like maybe there's some other buildings on the other side or something like that that makes it kind of bigger. I'm guessing probably not. I'm just I'm just saying that because of the roadways and you know where's that taxi on the right gonna go? 
when it, if it keeps going straight and all that stuff. And also the red platforms are going off to the sides. So I'm wondering if there's probably going to be more stuff down below or whatever. Which probably could uh, refer back to Mario jumping out of the uh, manhole. But we're going to have to see about that. Now we're going to switch scenes here. And here we're showing off Mario's ship. Which is in the shape of a hat. has a hat emblem on the door. And there's that Crazy Caps advertisement in the beginning of the video. And we're going to talk more about this later. But I'm thinking hats are going to play a big role in the game. But now we're going to talk about what's on the ship that we can see here. Mario has a flag on to the right. And then he has a globe to the left. I'm thinking that the flag might be like a save point or something like that. Or maybe it's just there for decoration. I don't know because it is a ship. So having a flag on there would make sense. But the earth the globe might be part of like a level select or something like that. I'm thinking because Mario can travel to different parts of this world or dimensions or whatever it's called. You want to call it. So that globe is probably the thing that uh, allows you to travel around. Kind of like the spaceship Mario from Mario Galaxy 2, I'm thinking. Like, this is Mario, like, the ship is Mario, is the spaceship Mario, and then the globe takes you to the, uh, map screen or whatever. So, that's gonna be kind of cool to look at. So, now we see him with his hat ship taking off to a new level, possibly the desert level. And we see Mario now doing this little tumbling at, um, move here. Not exactly a brand new move. He has had the ability to like do lawn jumps and stuff like that. And get curl up after doing a lawn jump. And then he kind of goes into a ball. But like Super Mario 3D World had him doing that. But that one looks like he can do it continuously. And get a lot of speed out of it. So that was pretty cool for it to see him using that move. Now we see Mario going up into the city area. And we see him collecting these little purple triangles. Now, I know for a fact they're not going to replace coins. These aren't the new currency for Super Mario Odyssey. These are just some sort of collectible. I'm not sure exactly what they can do. Maybe they're part of like a mission or something that Mario's got to complete to get like a star or whatever the main collectible of this game will be because you know he usually collects stars or shine sprites or whatever maybe these are like the replacements for the red or purple coins you know get a, gotta get a hundred of them in order to get a star out of it it's kind of hard to tell since there's no uh, heads up display to tell if this is like uh, what kind of uh, object this is but that's something we're gonna have to figure out when the game comes out now we're gonna go to the jungle area here and then we got these little uh these little watering can guys here, which look mechanical. They don't seem to be enemies since they don't really move or attack Mario in any way when he passes by. I mean, maybe they're the, they're just there for decoration, or maybe they're NPCs that you gotta help out. I don't know. They look like they're kind of malfunctioning and stuff, so maybe Mario has to fix them. But that's again, that's a thing we're gonna have to figure out when the game comes out. So now we see Mario going through the jungle more, running faster as he goes down through water streams, running on bridges of flowers. And here we see the beacon, again, on the left right over there. It looks kind of similar to the one that we saw in the city. We'll be seeing that again in just a bit. There's also the blue piece switch there that uh, will probably produce coins if you stand on it. That's what they do in the other 3D Mario games. Then we see him walking through this little food area. Very, very colorful, very polygonal. Some uh, old-fashioned enemies right over there. I'm thinking this is a cutscene right here. Seems to be really high quality. And then there's that beacon that I told you about. Um, I'm seriously thinking that this is going to be like an end of the, the level or end of the mission uh, type of beacon. Because Super Mario Galaxy and Galaxy 2 did the same thing where it told you where the end of the level is. So, maybe that's what it is. Um, it looks to be in the same area that we saw earlier in the trailer. So, it's probably the end of that uh, platforming section that we saw with the red scaffoldings and everything. I don't know. Now, here we are back in the Dia de los Muertos level. Nighttime now, interestingly enough. Uh, Mario is super cold. Nice animation there. Uh, this is making me think that there's either going to be a night or day cycle or the time of day is going to change based on whatever mission we take. Because we got to remember, this is a Mario 64 type of game. So there's going to be multiple missions uh, in these levels. And each one is probably going to have its own as aesthetic. You know, like Super Mario Sunshine had uh, Pianta Village where the 
levels or the missions would change between night and day. So maybe we're going to be seeing a lot of more of that in this game, which would be kind of cool. Having a night and day cycle would be kind of interesting also. And now we're seeing Mario interacting with some of these NPCs or side characters or whatever you want to call them. Obviously you're going to be able to interact with them and do stuff with them and all that. How much, how much of an extent we get out of that? Not sure, really. Uh, I, I highly doubt you're going to be able to talk to every single one of these people. Or maybe just a certain few of them. But... Heck, it's really cool to see all these little touches and stuff, you know, with Mario doing jump rope and dancing with some of the NPCs and looking at all of them and having different expressions and animations. That's really awesome, I think. Nice little attentions to detail, Nintendo. And now we're going to move into some more of those story elements that I told you about earlier. Here we see Mario going into the Crazy Cap uh, building right here. I'm thinking this might be a store where you could buy stuff for the hat or whatever. Because, um, yeah, this was also in the city area, but this looks nothing like um, that city area that we were in. So, maybe this is just like a interdimensional store or something like that. Uh, as we, we're going to see later on that Mario's hat is indeed alive. It has the same type of eyes on his hat. Maybe they're related somehow. This wouldn't be the first time that Mario had to use multiple caps in order to do other things as we know from Mario 64. So maybe you get different hats from here. Who knows? And now we're going to come up on this cutscene where we see Bowser and Peach. And we see here Bowser with a nice looking top hat. And he throws it. Supposedly throwing it at Mario. Now this is an important move you need to keep in mind for later on. For actually right now even. And remember, hats could play an important role in this story. So maybe Bowser has his own magical hat or something like that. And we're going to get an example of that right now. When we see Mario throwing his hat. And he's able to use it like a boomerang, can use it like a spring, and yeah, kind of crazy really seeing Mario use his hat for all these weird purposes. And maybe Bowser has his own type of hat that could be used with that kind of versatility also. And now we're stopping on this one scene with Mario riding around on this lion thing. As we see, if we look around the scene, there is a treasure chest, a bus stop sign, and a few benches. And if we actually looked earlier in the trailer, we could see this exact same setup in the nighttime section. There's a lion there, there's a bench, and a street sign. So maybe these things are strewn all about the city, and these can obviously be seen at different times of day, as we see in this scene where Mario is actually riding it during the nighttime. So who knows, maybe he got the lion from the front of the uh, Dia de los Muertos town, and is now riding him through the open desert. Who knows? It's actually kind of interesting to see him riding around on a animal that's not Yoshi. Now, after he runs through some of the different levels and encounters some newer enemies, we then see this poster here, which is obviously another plot point for the game. Not only is it about hats, it's also about Bowser and Peach possibly getting married. Ooh. Now, this isn't the first time we've ever seen Bowser, you know, try to get married to Peach. There's uh, some comics where he tried doing that. Even recently with Super Paper Mario, he there's a scene where they supposedly got married. And uh, they seem to be sporting some, some uh, kind of similar uh, wardrobe there also. So, Peach and Bowser for the win. I don't know. <laughs> That's a uh, interesting plot point. I never thought I'd seen that in a mainstream Mario game. But I digress. Let's continue on with the trailer. And yet another cutscene where now we're seeing Bowser just stomping on Mario's hat. As we're going to learn later on, like I said, hats are playing an important role in the game. So, I don't know, maybe that'll mean something. Now, as you remember from the beginning of this video, Mario's hat is still alive and as I and I guess is playing the role of the White Luma or Flood this game. So, maybe he's killing off the little sidekick. I don't know. We're going to have to see when that cutscene gets uh, fully shown off. And now we're moving on from that plot point to another plot point where we see these four bunny characters, which are, I guess, the not Koopalings this time. One of them looks like Ludwig von Koopa, and the other one is kind of like Wendy, I guess. She's the lone female of the group. Now, obviously, these guys are working for Bowser since he ha they have their own little airship that Bowser has been giving to his uh, minions as of late. Like, the Koopalings each got their own airship in New Super Mario Bros. U. 
So, and Mar Bowser Jr. had his own in the uh, Mario Galaxy games. So, yeah, these are obviously some new minions of Bowser's. So, wherever he found them, what exactly are they going to do? We don't know yet. I know of at least the blue one is a boss battle, as we see right here. And, yeah, I liked, I'm actually kind of interested to see what those types of characters do, because they're kind of wacky looking. And now we're coming up to what is possibly the coolest looking boss, in my opinion. This mechanical looking centipede guy. I mean, have you ever seen such a detailed and such a futuristic looking boss in a Mario game ever before? Even in the Mario Galaxy games, where, that, where a bunch of the enemies were mechanical and stuff. Like, none of them looked this detailed and this fierce. So, I'm really wondering what kind of boss fight this creature is going to be given Mario here, because... Looks like uh, something like you gotta scale the tower or whatever in order to fight him, but yeah, that's gonna be intense. I'm gonna, I'm looking forward to that boss fight. And now Mario gets pushed off the freaking building, possibly to his death. What kind of cutscene was that? How is that gonna end? How is Mario gonna get out of this? Tune in next time, same Mario time, aka the holiday. Same Mario Nintendo Switch. I botched that so badly. And yep, there goes Mario's hat with having eyes and being alive, obviously. So Bowser's hat might be the same way, we just haven't seen it yet. But yeah, so there was, there was Super Mario Odyssey, the hat-based dimension jumping Mario game that's going to be coming out this holiday season. I'm looking forward to the game, I've already pre-ordered it, I pre-ordered my Nintendo Switch. I'm really looking forward to playing this system because yesterday's presentation was just mind-blowing in so many ways. So many great games that are being made for it. I can't wait to see what else comes out for it. This Mario game is looking to be one of the best. Love the scope, love the detail, love the new imaginative creatures and bosses and levels that they put into this game. Like seriously, good job Nintendo on that whole trailer because you they made it look so epic. They made it look so grand, and yeah, I love Mar I love Mario so much. I was gonna get this game anyway, but now I'm even more hyped for it. So, yeah, I'm really excited to see this game, and I hope it delivers. But that'll do it for this analysis video, guys. Uh, second analysis video I've ever done, and I think this one was way better than the Zelda one I did previously. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys liked it. If you did, like, comment, and subscribe, please, please, it'll be much appreciated. And leave a comment down below, what do you think of Super Mario Odyssey? Did, uh, you see anything interesting that I might have missed? Are you excited for the game? Did you already get a Nintendo Switch or have one pre-ordered? If you did, go on and say down below in the comments. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna leave it here, guys. So yeah, thank you for watching again. And I'll try to make some more videos about the Nintendo Switch, and I'll be seeing you guys next time. Have a good day, good night, and have fun playing your Nintendo Switch.